Hey everybody, I'm Rick Beato. On today's Everything Music, I have my interview with Steve Vai from NAM 2020. I interviewed Steve once via Skype on this channel very early on. As a matter of fact, he was the first person I ever interviewed in my series entitled Sounding Off. You should go check out that video. So let's get right to it. Here's my interview with Steve Vai. I'm so honored to be with Mr. Steve Vai. I've interviewed Steve before, but only via Skype, and mm -hmm. we've met before one time at NAMM last year, just for two seconds, mm -hmm. and it's such a pleasure to get to sit with you in person Thank here. Thank you. It's, it's nice to see you, too. I, I've watched your site grow, and I, uh, you're, first, I think you're a brilliant musician. Thank you. You know, you've got incredible ears, and you've got great insight into uh, the kinds of things you're watching, and a great radar for extraordinary talent, and that's nice, and, and you're offering you know as the technology has evolved it makes learning so much more accessible to people yes. but you got to have the right stuff delivered in an easy to understand applicable effective way and you're doing such a great job of that thank and, you and things like youtube and and wikipedia yes uh, you know it's like you want to know about somebody you just go to wikipedia uh, this has made it so much easier for young musicians who are creative, yep. who can use their creativity uh, with courage and no excuses, and use the internet and things like YouTube to their advantage. It's a, it's a magnificent marketing tool. I mean, it takes the power out of, uh, out of the people who can wield uh, massive... Uh, magazines or marketing and it allows the artist to actually have the power to, 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 to do it for free you make money you make money I, that's I, right I, I didn't think of it that I way. was one of the uh, when monetizing first came out it was very simple yeah and, and YouTube was generous enough to allow people to actually make you know it's little bits here and there but I mean for me I we our monetized accounts uh, I don't do anything, and that's a couple of grand a month. Yeah. You know, you don't have to do anything. So, as a musician these days, you have to be very creative and look at all of your economic um, opportunities because that's they add up. But the economic opportunity, you got to find the balance between that and the creative opportunity yes. because sometimes they don't actually walk hand in hand right whereas most people some people may believe that I'm gonna make a lot of money doing this yeah but the content has to be inspired it has to be something that is interesting and creative so you're still left to the one device regardless of where technology goes you're always going to be left to the one thing that is has been a constant and I don't believe will change. I don't know how it could change, but it's your own creativity. Right. Yeah. Steve, uh, we've talked a little bit about this, about where young players are now and, and that idea of, of uh, kind of the possibilities of the guitar really being explored. Mm -hmm. Things that you did, you know, back at the beginning of your career and and uh, how you imagine the evolution of the guitar and mm -hmm. and all the advancements that you made on the guitar just with even with your guitar designs everything about that yeah. which I should be showing you this mm -hmm. signature guitar that we're releasing with Ibanez it's called the Piat the Beautiful. gem is still in uh, you know still in production still in production that's okay. not going anywhere and this is sort of like an evolution of the gem so tell me about this well, I wanted to change the grip. Okay, because you know? why? Why? Because I can. Okay, you know, and uh, I mean, you can still pick no it up. Problem. It's different. It's not as you know, but it's it's a different design. The monkey grip was beautiful. More kind of like um, twenty-five year old Steve Vai. Yeah, you know, quirky, and you know, and this is still quirky, but it's got a little more of an elegance to it, I think. And uh, this, the, I'm using a Sustaniac here, but uh, it comes with another gold. Okay. Yeah. And it's it's primarily a gem with the, the you know the edges are a little softened and mm -hmm. it's softened in various areas in the back and extra cutaway here and this you know, oh that's nice magnet, that's right? magnet that's way yeah cool. and this in combination with uh, this new synergy module now 
these are like the preamp sections of all the classic amps and there's no modeling. Mm -hmm. I couldn't believe it. Uh, for, for someone like myself, when I saw that, what uh, Synergy offers with the opportunity to have these modules that are authentic yeah. and real sounding and switchable, yes. and I just thought, really? Because the new gear comes along all the time, you know? Yeah. And that, I just thought, that is it. Because now instead of having one amp, they have many. I'm not exactly sure how many they've have so far, but they're constantly coming out with new ones and licensing yes, technology and, from other... And the modules are so easy to switch out, it oh. takes two seconds to yeah. do. I mean, it's basically as simple as... They have just the two little thumb screws on them. Yeah. You know, that is... and there it is, and they've got the tubes, and yeah, it's just fantastic. So, I'm in a really good place in that I get to work with all these incredible companies that are interested in, you know, kind of making stuff that suits my ear. And I'm lucky enough that there's some other people that enjoy it. How long did it take for you to, uh, to develop the module, Steve? Were you, how many different prototypes did you go through? Well, this went a little quicker because um, than like in the past. Mm -hmm. Like when I was working with Carvin, yeah, you know, we we started from ground zero, and I studied amp electronics, yeah. and you know, I worked with their great designers, and we came up with the Legacy One, which is perfect for yeah. what I wanted to do. And then you know, you continue to evolve, you know, and I, I like what I have, but a little more. Yeah, each time. But funny about us, you. <laughs> right, that's right, <laughs> and. Uh, so then we had the Legacy 2 and the Legacy 3. And, you know, when Carvin started to slow down, I, I wanted to develop something new. Even, yeah. Because it's just in your nature to do new stuff. Yes. See, this module is the preamp section. Yeah. And, but you have to have a power amp. And I'm using this. This is their Synergy uh, power amp. So all the stuff, and this is my fractal. So I've got all these amplifiers here, preamps. Yep. And they go into, they come out and they go into the Axe effects which is, th this is the Axe 2. Yep. I have the Axe 3, but I, this is my touring rig. Uh, so I, I'm, this is still in there. Yep. And um, then it comes out stereo and goes into the power amp, and then you've got your stereo spread. And then the front of the amp goes to pedal boards. You know, got if it. You want it. If you want to do any stomp boxes. And you're, do and you're using this for your effects, the fractal? I only use it for effects. Yeah. yeah. I don't do modeling. Yeah, I use it. I use some modeling in the studio occasionally. To I want to hear your philosophy on that. Tell me about that. Why don't you do? Why don't you use modeling? I've, I mean, well, I'm, first and foremost, I can't get past the latency. You know, I, I don't understand how anybody could make anything with latency in it. Right. How that works? Because even if it's, I can feel like a millisecond. Yeah. And and it, it, it you just feel disconnected. It's kind of talking, but not. Yep. <laughs> the words don't. Got right. You know, it's kind of like that. It's weird. Yeah. So I never could get past it. But even when I have, um, you never re for me throughout my career, I'm, you never really know what something sounds like until you take it to war. You know what I mean? Yeah. When you get on the battlefield, yeah. meaning the stage, there's so many other aspects of what's going on that you need to contend with. Like, let's just talk about the room. You know, yeah. the, the, every room is different. There's kickbacks, so you've got all this buildup of sound that can, can be coming back at you. What the floor is made out of, you know, if it's wood or stone or rubber, all of these things, or carpet, all yeah. these things change the sound drastically. The PA, the side fills, and you're competing with what, with what the guys are playing. And if you've That's got right. someone like Jeremy Coulson as a drummer, and you're anywhere between 30 feet of the kit, you won't hear anything else. Right. You know? And so, you know, you've got all these symbols and then you've got the bass frequencies. And when you get on, when you're sitting in your studio at home and you're playing around with, uh, you know, modeled stuff, this is what I've discovered. And, I'm, and there's some great stuff. Yeah. And, and you know, you go, well, that sounds great. You know, it sounds kind of strong and powerful, sort of, you know. And, you know, what is it that I'm kind of, well, but it sounds great. Okay. So you bring it into rehearsal and you start playing. Uh -huh. Well, you get it on the stage, actually. And it, it just goes away. Yeah. It does not, it can't compete with the massive 
overtones of uh, the rest of what's going on. That's one of the things I've noticed. And it always sounds a little, you know, it doesn't sound as robust. Like these, these are tubes and, and there's just a, a breath to this. Any piece of gear has a kind of personality in it. So if, I, if I'm playing something that's very dynamic, you know, amplifiers are going to pick it up a certain way. Yeah. You know, and it, those dynamics can get really flattened out and um, freeze dried <laughs> when it goes through the digital process. Yeah. You know, and I think that might have to do with, you know, what I'm hearing. But having said that, there's companies that are still continuing and working really hard and making great strides and developing yeah. better converters, you know. So who knows, it might, you know, maybe one day everybody's throwing out their turntables. Right. You know? <laughs> it's unlikely, but who knows. Yeah. So I'm not, uh, I, I, I'm not rigid. Yeah. You know, I'm like, whatever comes along that feels and sounds right. And a lot of that comes to me from like Thomas, my guitar tech, yep. you know, he'll, he's constantly bringing me stuff, you know, and that's how I know the outside world, you yeah. know, through Thomas. And um, my kids, you know, that, as you know, that, that's how you hear a lot that's of the music. That's how you hear new stuff, coming, that's you know, right. You know, so uh, I'm not opposed to anything that comes along, and I would never want to, uh, you know, dishearten somebody that's into digital gear and sitting on the fence. Yeah. You have to find what's right for you. For some people, that that's digital yeah, that's right. modeling sound might be just perfect. Yep. This um, sort of teardrop, it's called a pedal grip. Okay. You know, and it's got, uh, it's also like a yin and yang. Yeah. You would not believe how long it took me, how crazy I went, just trying to find the exact perfect angle and relationship between these two things. You know, oh, I believe I it. I got the illustration programs, and and then you, you know what it's like though when you when you nail it. Oh yeah, it's just like ah, there it is. Yeah, there it is. And I don't know what it is about this guitar. It, to me, it's just so gorgeous. It's you know? beautiful. It's like I keep it. It's in this. I've got the there's the green, there's gold, there's pink, and then there's white. And the colored ones are just for this year. You know, and we still you know they still have the gem. Yeah, you know, so that's going. But uh, every time I walk past this. In my house, I just I just sit in the studio and I just look at it. Oh, what is it about that guitar? How long have you been working on that? Just um, probably about a month now. Okay. Oh, you mean like no in the, in the, in development? Three years. Three years. Okay. Yeah. But it's you know it's a taste. You know Beautiful. I'm not I've never been one for like uh, you know the, like the the blood and the the, the crossbones and the you know, the skulls and stuff like that. It's fine. I've got some jackets and stuff like that. But I I don't know why, but I've always been into more of the romantic kind of thing, mm -hmm. you know. And this is a kind of a in, a, in a way, it's a romantic kind of looking instrument. Uh, Steve, this is really an honor. I, I really appreciate Thanks. it. Thanks. Um, yeah, it's for me too. Thank you so much for, yeah. uh, for everything. And yeah, you're doing great stuff. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Really appreciate it. That's all for now. I'd like to thank Steve for being my guest today. Remember to subscribe here to my Everything Music YouTube channel. If you're a first-time viewer, don't forget to ring the bell. If you're interested in the Beato book or anything in my store, that's how I support the channel. Go to my website at www.rickbeato.com. Follow me on Instagram at rickbeato1. Check out the new Beato Ear Training course. Go to BeatoEarTraining.com and you watch the introduction video. And if you want to support the channel even more, think about becoming a member of the Beato Club. Thanks for watching. Uh -oh.